Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. All right, you guys. A couple, couple things. Um, look, nobody's in trouble. I just want to make this clear. I just pretty much asked everyone. There was a couple people who had blocked like a lot of people, and I and I talked to them because it was becoming a problem. I said, hey, please just unblock everyone. Let's start over. Um, and so that person agreed to do that. You know, they humbled themselves and said, okay, I'll unblock everybody. And I said, look, the core people in this chat, we all get along here uh and so if i'm gonna ask one person to do it um you can each individually talk to me personally if there's someone that you just really feel like you have to block um just because what happens it just creates drama in the chat because what happens is there's conversations going on that people aren't part of and then people get upset and they're like what why can't i see these people what did i do and some people are were honestly puzzled about that and so I asked that person to unblock everybody so that we could have more unity in our chat. And they did that. And so come to me personally if there's someone that you really feel like you need to keep blocked. And um, I want to hear like your side of the story so we could just move forward. Now, having said all that, um, of course, when trolls come in the chat, obviously you have the right to block those people. Okay. And you should block those people. Um, and I'm talking about our core group here. Uh, we just really need to have unity because it, it just reflects badly when other people come into the chat and they see like drama going on or they see people blocking each other uh, it just reflects badly on our chat and i've had people tell me that their chat experience has not been very good and so fortunately we're getting down to the bottom of it and everyone's been unblocked and like i said if there's someone you feel like you really um you know want to keep blocked for whatever personal reasons i'll listen to that and if that's the case it's fine i just don't want any more bickering or fighting in the chat okay so having said that let's get into today's show now there's been a lot of talk about ultraviolet street lights and of course ultraviolet mold now there are some channels that you guys follow that have been covering these ultraviolet street lights and you can go ahead and call those channels out now if you want so that people can reference those channels and go back to them because it's going to be pertinent uh, for today's discussion. Now, why are we talking about ultraviolet street lights and ultraviolet mold? Well, I finally decided to watch the 2006 film Ultraviolet. Now, the film stars Mila Jojovich, or I think it's pronounced Hovovich, and what I found while decoding this box office failure was very disturbing. The film actually opens with the signature violet and yellow complementary colors. Now, the yellow is the same color as the pollen, the pollen-like powder that's been falling from the skies. It's now confirmed in several states that this is actually happening. Uh, MSNBC is now reporting it as mainstream news, as you can see here. And they're trying to write it off as some kind of dust from New Mexico and Texas. This is their cover story now. Now, just yesterday we were talking about this. And they were trying to say that this was uh, from a plant, from some kind of a processing plant for grains or something. Now, all of a sudden, the story has changed, and it's from New Mexico and Texas, blowing all the way over to Maryland. I do not buy this cover story, you guys. Something is not right. Look at this stuff. So, th what is this on these cars? Is it something growing on the cars? Is it some kind of mold, or is it falling from the air? And why is this in such close proximity and time frame from the Ohio train disaster and chemical burn. What is this about? Well, we get some clues about this in the opening sequences of this movie, Ultra Violet. Let's see if I can find it. Where did I put that? Now, what is this about? Well, we're going to get into that today. We're going to watch several of these these uh, these 
decodes that I've put together for you guys on some of this stuff. I'm going to break down how all this fits together because there is a lot of stuff going on with this, you guys. A lot of stuff. Now, what is the yellow represent? Well, the yellow, like I said, is the pollen, like we talked about on yesterday's show. The train derailment, the chemical burnoff, the ultraviolet, and the yellow. Now, I've got to find that here. Hold on just a second, you guys. Let me see if I can figure this out here. Thought I had this pulled up for you guys already, but let's see here. Okay. Did I do it? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and share screens again. Let's see here. Lost you guys. Okay. Here we go. Now, here you're going to see these complementary colors. Now, I was shocked to kind of see this. Because this ultraviolet and the yellow colors are complementary colors. Let's watch this. This is the opening sequence of ultraviolet. And there you see the yellow and the ultraviolet. Now the two are inextricably linked. Um, I come from a background of color theory. Graphic communication. That was what my Bachelor of Science degree was in. So these are... Colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. Now let's keep watching this as this develops because the film released on March 3rd. Now what is the significance of the release of this film on March 3rd? Well, March 3rd is 3-3 of course. The film is 88 minutes long. You're going to see this 88 minute thing repeat again at the end of this film it's where the boy passes out and pretty much almost dies but then he's reborn so 88 minutes let's keep going with this they created a more contagious form of the disease people just stopped hearing from them so let me give you the backdrop of this film but before we do, things get really creepy here because Ultraviolet was released in 2006 when Mila Hovovich was 30 years old. Well, guess what? Now in 2023, Cameron, Cameron Bright, the boy who Mila rescues in the film, is the same age that she was when the film released. He is now 30 years old. So... This time, this is basically time stamped. It's a time release. So what happened then is now happening now. Now, as you just heard, the backdrop of the film is a post-apocalyptic future where this new strain of vampire humans are being hunted down after an experimental super soldier program accidentally created them. Let's keep watching here. At first, requiring victims to wear identifying armbands and rounding them up in special camps and facilities. The medical establishment took it upon itself to protect its public. So there you see the masks. This was 2006. And they explained the transition from terrorism to bioterrorism and fear. Which is exactly what happened after 9-11. We transitioned right into COVID fear, didn't we? From terrorist fear. And the biological industrial complex was born. Look at all these masks, you guys. Watch. Of disease. Now, the vampires are called hemophages. And they attack the human blood banks by flying these black spheres inside the building to infect the humans with their blood. This is like the black blood. These are like basically what you're looking at here are black blue blood. 
black blood cells infecting humans with their blood to turn them into vampires. Watch. Well, what if they didn't come to take the blood out? What if they came to infect it? My God. And now the leader of the militant medical establishment running this phobic world is Vice Cardinal Ferdinand. Ferdinand Daxis. Now, this is at the point of this move of the movie. Violet identifies the head of the police state, whose name is Daxis. And then I saw that the headquarters building in the movie is a sphere. And as she's explaining all this, a revelation hit me. You too is doing a an ultraviolet tour at the Vegas Sphere this year. The two have to be connected. In fact, the sphere in the movie is identical to the Vegas Sphere. Look at the geodesic pattern on the sphere here with the upside down and right side up triangles. Wow. Now, this alone doesn't prove that Bono is a vampire, but just wait until we continue to unpack this because the evidence... Reverse engineer DNA identification in process. Now, on this part, this is interesting because basically, Violet infiltrates the ministry disguised as a human because she has to try to get in there to figure out what is going on with this bioweapon that they have they get word that there's a bioweapon and she sent on a mission to intercept this bioweapon or what she believes to be a bioweapon and it actually is but it's not what they think it is and they because they think it's a weapon that's going to be used to wipe out all the hemophages herself included but it's actually a weapon to wipe out humans so she infiltrates the ministry and Watch this. XPD-154, you'll be receiving a case containing a weapon. I don't have to tell you. Under no circumstances should you open it. And Obviously, he's wearing a face shield. I mean, this is creepy, you guys. He then makes her sign in blood. Under no circumstances should you open it. What well, looks like an H. We buy D Now... At this point, she begins her escape, and she's identified by the ministry as a prior patient whom they forced an abortion on because she was infected as a hemophage vampire. What I want you to notice here is as they're talking about her backstory, you see an umbrella. The umbrella is the needle, and the needle will be the cause of the barren womb. The trilon and perisphere is actually the needle in the womb. That's what it is. The trilon is the needle, the perisphere is the womb. Listen to this again. We buy Dieter. Nation of her pregnancy. Wow, let me check in with you guys. Make sure you guys are with me. And we'll keep going with this. Unbelievable. Very good. Welcome, everybody. Let's keep going with this. What's your status? The needle in the Chinois girl. <laughs> so, Violet then brings the bioweapon back to her home base, which is a giant needle in Chicago. Another clue that this is all about needles. Now, Violet is told to not open the case, but curiosity overcomes her. She's in the elevator, which is essentially the plunger needle. She's going up to the top of the needle. Let's back this up so you guys can see this. So she's going in an elevator up the needle. 
That's the plunger. This is a giant plunger needle, right? The elevator becomes the bolus, injecting it into the top. And as she's sitting in the elevator, she opens the case. And inside is Cameron Bright. Who is right now, as we speak, the same age that Violet was, Mila, jo Mila Hovovich was in the film that came out in 2006. Watch. And that will wipe them out. But later in the film, we find out that he actually carries an antigen that will wipe out humans. Its blood is swarming with cultured antigens that would kill all of us on contact. It's a weapon and a child. It would find us, and it would kill us. All of us. If they atomize its tissues into the atmosphere, it would be like insecticide to people. Like So, atomized tissues in the atmosphere, that's obviously a chemtrail reference. And in fact, in the beginning of this film, I don't know if I captured it, but there were chemtrails in the sky at the opening of this film. You and me. If there's an accelerator for HGV in this child's blood, then so is the counter analog for decelerating it. Now you just heard her talk about an accelerator. Well, remember the X-Files episode that we just decoded? Well, they were talking about an accelerator? Well, there's something to this, isn't there? A cure. What are you saying, V? Sweet. So... Violet then takes Cameron, the boy, and escapes. But she realizes that he has a self-destruct. And that it's hopeless anyway. And so she tries to ditch him. You should uh, really... Put your mask up. Goodbye, Violet. And... As she parts with him, she literally tells him to put his mask up. And it looks like he's wearing a face diaper. This was in 2006, you guys. And it's happening now. Now this next scene is set in a cemetery. Where here you see the serpent on the cross. Now what does this represent? The twisted serpents on the cross. Well, I believe this represents the merging of the two seed lines. Violet Song Judge Sharif, what are you thinking? It's not a vampire antigen, but a human antigen. So then it's revealed that the boy has a human antigen that's meant to kill humans. Lethal enough to kill every human on the planet. The vampires then try to destroy Cameron by dropping him into a well. Watch. But Violet ends up saving him right and he drops his shoe it's like the other shoe dropping right and he does this to so that violet can time how long it takes for the shoe to hit the bottom of the well to see how much time she has to take on all of the people surrounding the well protecting him so that he can be dropped in the well and look at the hexagon shape of the well. We'll be talking about the hexagon matrix on tomorrow's show. With I Am Legend, John Legend. And the new Got Booster Pfizer commercial. With a piano full of honeybees. And we're also going to talk about a new cube that has emerged in a new 15-minute city. That will be tomorrow's show. But let's keep decoding this here. So she's timing it to see how long it takes the shoe to drop. Mm -hmm. 
She then takes on all the guys, defeats them, grabs the rope just before Cameron hits the bottom of the well. And here you see the serpent on the cross in the backdrop behind the clock. Now this image is loaded with symbolism. Watch and then I'll explain. There she pulls him out of the well. Now what does this represent? Well, this well represents a portal. The well of time. And this is why the opening of the well was hexagon shaped. Because that's the Saturn time trap. This is why there's a cube or a hexagon at the North Pole of Saturn. This is the cube matrix. It's the honeycomb of time. We are trapped here with the serpent until Jesus returns. The serpent rules this reality. But our hope is not in this world. It's in the next world. Now the enemy wants us baptized in this portal well. He wants us baptized into darkness. He wants us born again into sin. Not into the infinite waters of Jesus' well that never runs dry. Remember the woman at the well who had five husbands? And Jesus said to her, Drink of the waters of my well and it will never run dry. Well, this is, they're recreating this here. Except this is the dark well, the dark portal. This is unbelievable. Now this was this film did horribly at the box office, but look at the symbolism in this. I mean, this is shocking. Just shocking. Now I don't show it here, but the serpent is the rope and it's coiled up just like a serpent would be coiled up. And you see the coil peeling off as she's fighting everybody, as the rope, as camera's dropping down the well. The coil is peeling off like a serpent coming up out into a striking pose. And she grabs the rope just in time as the entire coil was almost expired. So what is the serpent rebirth? What does that really mean? Well, it's revealed in the very next scene. Let's keep watching here. He's my clone. Number six in a series of eight. What the hell difference does it make? He so, she finds out that Cameron is a clone of Daxus. Born again into cloning. That is the dark well. That is the dark portal. Portal. Somehow the enemy is going to find a way to convince the world that we'll just clone you. You can have everlasting life in this reality is what he's going to tell people. And he's going to somehow say that he's going to be able to download your consciousness into the new body. People wake up in the new body. Now how, how can the enemy do this? Well, the enemy... I'm going to go back in the chat here. Make sure you guys are with me. Think about this for a second. How would the enemy be able to do this? Well, the enemy can possess things, can't he? So, he's going to combine himself with humanity, somehow, through bloodlines, and then possess the new body. So basically, you'll be together with a demon inside of a new body. And then he's going to say, hey, we found a way for people to live forever. This, I believe, is what the enemy's plan is. This is why he has to mix you together with the enemy. You have to have the twin spirits inside of you before this can happen. Because it's basically the, the demon is the one that will allow you to jump into the new body. Does this make sense to anyone? I hope it does, because you should not fall for this trap. It will sound good. But it's not. Let's keep going with this. Because 
Violet decides to save Cameron. Because remember, he's dying. And the only one that has the cure is Daxus. So she literally has to take on 700 soldiers in front of the sphere. Well, yes, there is an antidote. And yes, when I get the boy, isolate the antigen and release it into the atmosphere. Anyone who wants to live will queue up daily at this door to get it. Do you hear the queue up part? That wasn't an accident. Queue up daily to get the antidote. And that is an exact replica of the sphere in Vegas. The sphere that Bono will be playing at. And one of you noticed when I leaked this image of Violet standing in front of the sphere holding a katana. One of you saw the connection. Of something that we had previously decoded. You had seen this before. Because it was Martha Stewart. Beheading the pineapple. With her katana. The pattern on the pineapple. Is the same as the pattern. On the sphere. Martha Stewart then gets her blue blood band-aid in that Got Booster commercial by Pfizer during the Super Bowl. After beheading, taking the crown of the pineapple. This image is this image. They're spiritually one in the same. Cutting the crown off of the womb. Cutting the crown off of the womb matrix. Taking your crown. Let's keep going with this. Unbelievable. What's someone like me, someone with a job to do, going to use to keep order in a society that left to itself would sprint toward chaos? But now that you and those like you are all but extinct. I demonstrate. For God's sake. Violet, I'm unarmed. So Violet defeats the 700 soldiers and she faces off with Daxus inside the sphere. Daxus then reveals that he is also a vampire. And he turns the lights off inside of the sphere to even the odds. Because these vampires operate in the darkness. They're light sensitive. And this is where you get confirmation about Bono being a UV vampire. It was Violet's glasses that gave it away for me. The same shade as the one that Bono wears. Because Bono is also sensitive to UV light. Like a vampire. He claims he has glaucoma. Which makes people UV sensitive. UV is ultra vampire. And ultraviolet. Now here's where things go off the rails. Because Bono's name originated from a nickname he was given in childhood. Bono Vox. So Bono Vox is Bono Daxis. Now there was even a Polaroid that went for auction. That Bono took. As a charity auction. And the Polaroid is Bono wearing vampire teeth. 
They made it into a clock. They called it the Bono Vampire Clock. He signed it. So there's no question at all. Here's the clock here. Looks like 500 euros it went for or bidding or whatever. The clock allegedly screams at midnight. Specifically for donation to an auction in support of AIDS research. Held in the Mansion House Dublin Unique. AIDS research. The connection to what many believe is happening right now. I'm not going to say specifically, but you all know it. And you can help people in the chat who don't know it. Let's keep watching here. So, here's the clock. There's Bono. It's signed by him. He's wearing fangs. And it's called the Vampire Clock. Now, one fan even called Bono a vampire when he bit the neck of a bandmate on stage at the MCI Center in Washington, D.C. Fans have long suspected that U2 drummer Larry Mullen Jr., who hasn't aged today since U2 was formed in 1979, is a vampire. But Bono definitely proved that theory wrong during Love and Peace or Else at DC's MCI Center by clamping his fangs into poor Larry's neck for a good long drink. You saw the photographic evidence here first. This image released in the same year that the film Ultraviolet released in 2006. Now, here's another proof that I found that all is not right with Bono. Now, interestingly, Bono's name actually means good. But Bono has an alter ego. Bono's alter ego is Mephisto, the devil himself. Mac Fisto is his name. And this is who he likes to dress up as in some concerts. Here's an image of him here dressed in the alternate persona. And this is a whole article on this and what all this means. Here's him again. Unbelievable. Mac Fisto. Now, let's keep going with this and finish up this decode. And we're going to pivot here because there was an interesting movie that I watched called The Spore. One of you asked me to watch this. This came out in 2021. And I, it's a B movie, so there it, it was mostly lame, but I decoded the first 20 minutes of it. And here is the movie spore the spore now when i see the word spore it reminds me of the word sphere doesn't it it reminds me of the word sphere both are orb shaped objects watch The film opens with the date 923, a very occult date. A lot of people think the end of the world is going to happen on 923. Then they d define what a spore is, a small single-celled reproductive body that is highly resistant to desiccation and is capable of growing into a new organism. Then you see 203 CDC field investigation in Michigan. 203 Eastern Standard Time. There's that 23 number again.
And then I saw this. In a completely unrelated film, I just picked it up, and all of a sudden it dovetailed into Bono. Look at the look here. Now, I don't know what this hat's called. I looked it up. I think it's called a fedora, but I've seen other names for it. But look at this side by side here. Now this guy ends up dying early in the movie, but he's the first character in the movie with the light shaded glasses and the fedora hat. This is Bono from the music video Stay. So Bono is definitely one to watch, isn't he? Now, let's go back to Ultraviolet. I know I'm jumping around a bit, but I wanted to make sure and cover all this with you guys. Let's keep going because Cameron becomes more and more sick. This is Cameron's the boy, remember. After they escape the sphere. And he collapses in the center of two octagons. In other words, an 88. Watch. There's them rising up through a triangle. There you see the needle. Next to them is the sphere that they did battle in. And there's Cameron laying in between the 88. Now there are actually three octagons, so you could say 888. By the way, the train disaster movie with Denzel Washington was based off of train 8888 it was carrying chemicals this was back in 2001 this was a foreshadowing of the events that would happen on 2-3-2023 both happening in Ohio wow okay let's go back to this here So, at this point, Cameron is reborn. How? Well, Violet sheds a tear onto him. And it goes onto his face and revives him. He is revived with the vampire tear. So, essentially, this is a symbolic baptism. Right? Because what you have here is the 888 represents a portal. Remember, the number 88 is a portal. It's, it's time and space. So, she sheds the tear on him. He's revived. So, this is like the second baptism. The first baptism was the well. This is the second baptism. Reborn into the image of the beast. He's cured. Watch. Thirty years old, now thirty years old. The cure is the disease. Wow. Now, tomorrow is a show you're not going to want to miss. Another Pfizer Got Booster ad with John Legend. And also we're going to take a look at a new 15-minute city called, literally, Murder Abba. That's going to be tomorrow's show. Here's the thumbnail. Now, the symbolism of these two interconnected but seemingly unrelated ads is probably deeper than anything we've ever covered to date. Definitely not going to want to miss that. The Murder Abba City. And John Legend's Honeycomb Matrix Piano. 
this thing was loaded. I just finished my show notes just before the show today. And I'll be presenting this to you guys tomorrow. Let's go back into the chat. Good morning, everybody. Oh, did we get knocked off? Okay, we're good. Okay, let's see what you guys are up to. We'll do a little Q&A for a bit before we um, end the show here. Have you decoded Jeepers Creepers 2 movies? No, I have not. Um, is there anything uh, specifically in it that you want me to look at? Yep, remember the Con Op Plan 8888? I think that's all related to that train in Ohio. The runaway train that almost went off the tracks. They actually tried to derail it, by the way. With these derailers. But the train kept blasting through them. Even though this thing was full of toxic chemicals. And by the way... The let's go back to this train incident. The conductor who was responsible for this, his name has never been released. And the movie Unstoppable was based off of this train incident. CSX never made public the name of the 35-year veteran engineer whose error caused the run runaway, nor what disciplinary action was taken. This thing was full of chemicals. They tried to derail it several times with a portable derailer, which would have caused even more of a disaster. This was Tony, uh, Tony Scott's last film before he died. Was it Tony Scott? I always forget. And the location was 66 miles. Wow. Alright, I'm back in the chat, you guys. Crazy times. Welcome to the Matrix. Now, why do we cover all this stuff? There's no need for fear. We already know what the outcome's going to be. The only reason why we decode this stuff is so people can see the truth about this reality. Snap out of it and give their life to Jesus Christ. Someone actually tried to come on here the other day and said, nobody is, lear is being saved by the gospel on this channel. Uh, it's just the opposite, actually. Many, many... Thousands of people have been saved by coming to this channel. Not because of us, but because of God working through this channel. All you got to do is look into the comment sections. People are being saved every single day from this information. And there's no need for fear. If someone's afraid, that means they're not truly saved. So... We cover these things to steer clear of the enemy's tricks and his vices and to warn the body of Christ and also show people the true face of the enemy so that they're not living in some Pollyanna existence thinking America's wonderful and drug companies are great and governments are good and voting's great and working yourself to the bone until your back goes out and your mind goes out is great. No, none of that's great. But most people are asleep to that. They watch their football and their cable and their MTV or whatever. And they think everything's great. They don't think they need God until you see stuff like this. This is what wakes people up and makes them realize that they need to be saved. Because we are talking about all these things before they happen. Through the glory of God. To show people that God is, wants to save you. He wants you to accept his son's sacrifice. So not, never let anyone tell you that the work that we're doing here is not vitally important to the salvation of lots and lots of people. Because it actually is. Many of you, even in this chat right now, were lost, but now you are saved. You've told me this personally over the years. Once you were in denial, and now you've been saved. Because you accepted the gospel. Because you see the reality that we live in. 
So I reject and rebuke all of those assertions that this is a huge waste of time and ask yourself why someone would try to tell you that Bono is a good person. Those are the questions you should be asking. Those are the questions that you should be asking. Okay, I love you guys. Gosh, that was a rough one. Um, that was kind of a hard decode to get through because the movie was just off the rail symbolism. There was so much symbolism in Ultraviolet. Uh, so, uh, you know, tomorrow's show will be a little bit slower paced, um, but it'll be packed with information. So, I love you guys, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care and be safe.